Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at what really is a ridiculous product, the Philips Momentum 43, which also has a crazy product name you might have seen, which I'll put on the screen now rather than trying to say it and stuff it up every time. Anyway, the Momentum 43 is a 43-inch 4K HDR monitor. It's not a TV according to Philips, but a monitor. So apparently they think some people are interested in such a massive display for their PC. This thing is pretty big. It's been sitting in my hall way for a while now so I figured it's about time I get to reviewing it and I'll talk a bit more about the size later but first a couple of important specs this 43 inch 3840 by 2160 panel uses VA technology with a quantum dot film and it sports display HDR 1000 certification plus you get adaptive sync aka free sync they're in a rather narrow 48 to 60 hertz range with a 48 hertz minimum we're not getting low frame rate compensation or LFC and as a result we're also not getting the full benefit of FreeSync. It's also the reason why the Momentum 43 is not advertised as a FreeSync 2 HDR panel. It fails the certification process for FreeSync 2 as it doesn't support LFC. This is despite the display boasting full display HDR 1000 compliance. The lack of FreeSync 2 and LFC is a bit of a bummer considering Philips is positioning this display as more of an entertainment or gaming focused unit. You'll be fine watching HDR movies or playing console games, but PC gamers are a bit left behind compared to the best 4K gaming displays out there. This monitor is better suited to non-PC usage for another reason as well. It uses a non-standard subpixel structure which causes a bit of text blurriness in Windows. It's definitely not the clearest 4K display I've seen and this doesn't have anything to do with its size as the pixel density here matches that of a 27 inch 1440p monitor. The BGR instead of RGB subpixel array is a non-issue outside of viewing text and documents in a PC operating system though so gaming is fine for example. While Philips does see this as a gaming or entertainment display there there are some odd design choices that go against this marketing push. The panel only has a single HDMI port, so those with multiple consoles or perhaps a console and a 4K Blu-ray player can't plug in both at the same time without a switch or adapter. But then there are two display ports, one full size and one mini, along with a USB-C input using DP Alt mode. These are features you'd normally associate with a PC monitor rather than an entertainment focused display. With a wide two prong stand, the Momentum 43 looks more like a modern TV than a traditional monitor. The display is of average thickness with average bezels, nothing amazing for a monitor of this size. The use of basic plastic on the front and rear keeps everything looking nice and minimal. In choosing this sort of design, the Momentum could be used for a number of applications without looking out of place. It could be a TV for console gaming, it could be a large office monitor, or it could just be a monstrous PC gaming display. Along the bottom edge you'll find Philips Ambiglow lighting which is basically just two RGB LED strips and some processing software that gets these strips to mimic the average colours currently on the display. In a dark room with white walls this provides pleasant ambient lighting in some situations and it works quite well. It's both responsive and accurate to what's being shown. If you like this sort of ambient lighting it's worth experimenting with and it's definitely more useful than just a basic RGB strip. Of course it can also be fully disabled and in fact comes disabled by default if you want a more traditional additional display experience. As for the on-screen display, Philips does include a directional toggle on the display itself for easy navigation, but even easier than that is the remote they include. The remote is very basic and is mainly used for changing inputs and the volume of the built-in speakers but it can also be used to flick through the on-screen settings, and that certainly helped for calibrating the display. Plus, if you end up using the Momentum 43 as a TV, the remote is basically an essential inclusion. It shouldn't come as a surprise though that the stand is very limited in that it only provides tilt adjustment, I would have been amazed if it included any other adjustments. So if you want to mount the screen higher up or at an angle, you'll need to purchase a 200x200 200 200 Visa mount, which is compatible with a display this size and weight. Obviously, one of the big draw cards of the Momentum 43 is its size, and this thing is certainly enormous. For gaming, I use a 34-inch Acer Predator X34 Ultra Wide, which is already pretty wide as it is, but the Momentum 43 is a good 10 centimeters wider while obviously being significantly taller as it's a 16.9 panel. For productivity use, I found the momentum to be impractical for most tasks. It does have a few things going for it. A pixel density equivalent to a 27 inch 1440p display means you don't have to mess around with display scaling to read text at a typical desk viewing distance. It also gives you plenty of screen real estate equivalent to four 21.5 inch 1080p monitors in a two x two grid. So you can snap apps to each corner and view four windows at once while still keeping things nice and visible, something you really can't do with a 32-inch 4K monitor or smaller. 
But my main problem with this monitor for productivity tasks is that no work mode ever feels comfortable to use. If you're just viewing one massive 4K window, that's a waste of screen real estate. And in many apps like Photoshop, your eyes will be darting around the screen to taskbars on the left and right sides. In a split screen view, because the panel is flat, the edges are far away from your eyes and it's just not a great experience compared to a standard dual screen setup where you'd you know, angle the screens for optimal viewing of each one. And then with one window in each corner, nothing important is in the center of the screen and the center is the most easily viewable part. Where this size really shines is for entertainment, which is exactly what Philips markets this display for. When you chuck a 43 inch screen at arm's reach on a desk, it's truly enormous, occupying a massive amount of your field of view. Compared to a standard 21.9 ultra wide monitor, the major advantage is in its height. The Momentum 43 just engulfs your vision where an ultra wide doesn't really provide the same level of vertical immersion. That said, in a lot of games, you'll have to adjust the field of view and the HUD positioning to ensure the main action is still in the center of the display. I felt the best use of the Momentum 43 as a PC gaming display was in games that allow you to adjust these things so that you're not just viewing a blown up image, but instead of getting you know, more peripheral vision, both horizontally and vertically. Not every game allows you to do that though, or can do so without a fisheye effect. So it can be a bit of a mixed bag. Would I personally use a 43 inch display for gaming? Well, probably not considering my existing 21.9 display is actually useful as a productivity monitor and the extra size of the 43 inch momentum doesn't always lead to better results in games. But I can definitely see the appeal for a massive display like this for some gamers, so it's gonna be more of a niche thing. Aside from the size, the other key reason to buy the Momentum 43 is its HDR capabilities, in particular Display HDR 1000 certification. What we're getting here on the spec sheet is actually pretty good as far as monitors are concerned. We often see companies slapping HDR onto their monitor boxes without tackling even one of the three key HDR pillars, but in this case, Philips has made an effort to provide an HDR experience that exceeds SDR, and that shows with Display HDR 1000 certification. As you can see in the checklist, we get over 700 nits of sustained brightness and 1000 nits peak, so Philips has smashed that target. We also see an increased color space of 145% sRGB, a 10-bit panel through FRC, and local dimming. However, the big omission here is an FALD, or Full Array Local Dimming Backlight. The Momentum 43 only features edge-lit dimming in 32 zones, so unfortunately this panel doesn't meet everything in my HDR checklist. And let's talk about the edge lit dimming for a moment here. 32 zones is larger than what you see with Samsung's basic HDR panels, for example, but it's still nowhere near the level of the 384 zone FALD backlight you get with ASUS and ACES G-Sync HDR monitors. The big issue with edge lit dimming is it can't show bright objects in the center of the display without producing a noticeable glow that extends from the edges of the display to the bright object. VA's excellent native contrast helps mitigate this issue somewhat compared to IPS displays, but the glow is still present and in a dark viewing environment, it's pretty noticeable. Each lighting zone also appears a little slow to respond compared to other HDR displays I've used. While I could slam Philips more for using edge lit local dimming, the reality is this monitor's HDR mode does provide an improvement over SDR because it comfortably provides two of the three key HDR pillars in brightness and color space. And in a lot of situations, the edge lit backlight does help improve the dynamic range and contrast of scenes, but of course it does depend on what you're viewing. So it's not like the HDR experience is awful because it lacks an FALD backlight. It's definitely better than SDR, but the experience isn't as good as with a proper HDR display that ticks every box. So I guess I'd have to class the Momentum 43 as an HDR light display or something along those lines. The good news is that the areas of HDR that the Momentum 43 does support, like brightness and color space, it supports really well. The panel can comfortably sustain over 900 nits of brightness regardless of the window size. And while peak brightness doesn't quite hit 1000 nits, the 935 nits my unit can produce is absolutely blinding at a desk viewing distance. When you're not experiencing the glow issues from the edge lit backlight, we're also getting contrast ratio over 40,000 to 1 in a best case scenario, which is pretty great. And as for color space, 97% DCI P3 coverage means the display can show a significantly higher number of colors than basic sRGB, which leads to more vibrant imagery in the HDR mode. As we're looking at a VA panel here, I wasn't expecting fantastic response times. Philips claims a four millisecond grade to grade transition, which is well below what we typically see from VA panels in practice. So my immediate thought was they're probably fudging that number. However, this particular 43 inch VA panel is actually one of the best VAs for response times. 
response. I recorded an average greater grade response of 6.53 milliseconds with relatively consistent performance for rises and falls. This is well below the 16.7 millisecond refresh window of the 60 hertz panel, and no single transition comes even close to exceeding it. We're not quite in the ballpark of a good TN, but this is definitely a very good result for a VA. With this sort of performance, the Momentum 43 would be well suited to running at 120 hertz, but unfortunately we're capped to just 60 hertz. I should also mention here that we're using an off overdrive setting. Uh, all the other overdrive settings introduce overshoot, uh, but the performance from the off mode is actually still pretty good, so it's not a bad mode to use at all. Input lag isn't as fantastic with the Momentum 43. Using our standard test conditions, which includes the display in a calibrated state running over DisplayPort at a native resolution with a low input lag mode enabled, I measured lag of approximately 34 milliseconds, and you can add on another 10 to 15 milliseconds when switching the low input lag mode off. This is a very poor input lag result, making this monitor one of the slowest we've tested. I did see some other reviews claiming input lag that's much better than this, however, I couldn't replicate those results from any configuration of settings I tried, so not sure what's the case there. In terms of SDR brightness and contrast, the display tops out at around 560 nits and delivers a native contrast ratio of around 4500 to 1, although you can use the dynamic backlight in the SDR mode to increase that contrast ratio further. SDR color performance out of the box is disappointing for a number of reasons. In its default state, the display delivers an uncalibrated color gamut, so standard sRGB imagery is stretched out to a wider gamut, approximately DCI-P3, which leads to oversaturation. When looking at our saturation and color checker charts, this is quite evident and is the cause of the high average delta E's. Default white balance is also a little off, the screen appears to have a slight red tint when viewing whites, and while the average delta E is reasonable in grayscale, there's a few issues with the CCT and gamma curves. Philips does include an sRGB mode, and this tightens up the gamut to sRGB, which solves the saturation issue. However, the issue with the sRGB mode is it doesn't allow you to change the brightness level, so if you want near accurate colors, you're stuck with a very high 417 nits of brightness, which is Quite frankly, a ridiculous restriction that makes the sRGB mode completely useless. No one in a typical usage environment is gonna be running this monitor at 417 nits. If you could change the brightness, it would be a great option for those that want near accuracy without a full calibration, but locking the brightness slider is just a dumb oversight or choice on the part of Philips. If you want to get accurate color performance out of the Momentum 43, you have no choice but to perform a full calibration using something like Spectracal's Calman 5, as there's no other setting in the OSD that allows you to restrict the display to sRGB for SDR usage. The good news is the panel is highly calibratable and every aspect of its performance can be corrected to an elite standard without sacrificing brightness or contrast ratio, though as you need to a uh, software profile to do so, not every app will pay attention to these corrections. The final area of performance I wanted to explore is uniformity, and it's perhaps the area I was most disappointed in. My Philips Momentum 43 is not particularly uniform, and it's visible immediately when viewing any solid colors. There's an obvious dark shadow around the edges of the monitor, which basically causes a vignette effect. This is really disappointing for a high-end display of this size. You're getting entry-level uniformity here, and this is something you really can't correct. So the one thing I haven't mentioned up until this point is the price, and that's largely because this is a niche product. Those looking to buy something like the Momentum 43 will be specifically after what this display provides, and really there's not a lot of competition. There are a few other 43-inch 4K displays out there, but the Momentum 43 is the only one that is HDR capable and is certified for display HDR 1000. Anyway, the Momentum 43 is priced at 900 US dollars or 1400 Aussie, which is around 250 to 300 US dollars more than your basic 43 inch 4K IPS SDR display. And those typically retail for 600 to 650 US. The HDR provided by the Momentum 43 is far from perfect, but it still will deliver a much better experience than those basic 43 inch displays. So I'd say the higher price is worth it in that sense. That said, I'd really only recommend this monitor for those who want to use it for HDR gaming or movie playback. The SDR mode has a few issues like a wider than standard color gamut that you can't easily correct, and the uniformity issue makes desktop use with solid colors a bit of an eyesore. Those who just want a massive display for productivity for whatever reason are gonna be better off with the $600 basic IPS equivalent. But the bigger question is whether you should buy a 43-inch monitor like this at all. 
As I mentioned earlier in this video, I think this sort of size is impractical for productivity use. Those that want to multitask with side-by-side -side apps are better off with either an ultra-wide display or multiple monitors, so you can position them to better suit your field of view. For PC gamers, the Momentum 43 is massive, but if you're using it at a standard desk viewing distance, you'll most often find games are just enlarged onto this huge screen rather than extended to give you a better field of view. For that reason, I'd probably again recommend either an ultra-wide display or say a 32-inch monitor, which will present you with fewer issues. And then for people wanting to use the Momentum 43 more as a TV, say for console gaming or movie watching, I don't think it provides good value. Sure, it is a 4K HDR display and has a remote, but there are much better 4K HDR TV deals out there. I'd recommend the 55-inch Vizio P series, which is actually $100 less than the Momentum 43, while providing a larger screen, an FALD backlight for better HDR, and similar brightness, color space, and contrast to the Momentum. And it has five HDMI ports, not one. So at the end of the day, the Philips Momentum 43 is kind of left in no man's land. It's a fairly respectable display in its own right. It does a lot of things well and also has a few issues, but I just don't see a use case for this class of display at this price. It's basically a super niche product. You'd only really consider it seriously if you had a specific reason to purchase a 43 inch monitor with display HDR 1000. And for most people, I don't imagine they will have that specific reason. Luckily for Philips, I have a 32 inch version from their new Momentum series here in the office as well to test. So look out for that on the channel soon. I think it might be more useful to a wider audience, but we'll see because I haven't actually unboxed it yet. So I guess subscribe for that and more monitor reviews. Consider supporting us on Patreon for access to our exclusive Discord chat, and I'll catch you in the next one.